Hello everyone, today we are working on lesson 5-2, area of parallelograms. At the end of the lesson, you will be able to solve area of parallelograms by using formulas. Today you're going to need several different materials, including scissors, a glue stick, your writing utensils, your whiteboard, your math journal, your math notebook, and a happy face. So pretty much everything except a calculator. So pause the video and go ahead and grab those things. All right, here we go. So what is reflection? Hopefully a lot of you know that reflection is light bouncing off of a flat surface and reflecting it in an opposite direction. So when we're talking about reflection in math, it works the same way. Today we're going to be learning about reflection over an x -ax over the x and y axis. The axis is just the line on a coordinate grid. So when you have a point that's being reflected over the x-axis, it would have the same x value, but opposite y value. So it's gonna be in the same spot and its x value, but the opposite y value because it's reflecting. And then it goes the opposite way for the y-axis. If it's reflecting over the y-axis, it has the same y value and opposite x value. So let's take a look at negative four seven for example. So here we have that plotted in purple. If you were going to find the coordinates for its reflection over the x axis, my pen here, x axis, that's this line. So we're going to reflect it over to the other side of the x axis. So it would still have its x value of negative four, we're still going to go to the left four, but instead of going up seven, we're going to have the opposite y value and we're going to go down seven. So it'll be right there at negative four, negative seven. Now if we try to reflect it over the y axis, that's this one, it's going to have the opposite x value, but the same y value. So its y value is already seven, and its x value is going to be opposite. So the absolute value of negative four would be four. So we'd go over four and up seven. So instead of negative four, it would be positive four. 7 would be the x the, would be the y axis reflection. All right, so that's what our mental math is going to be on today. So, write the ordered pair that would be a reflection over the x axis. That's this one, 4 5. So, I'm going to go to the right 4 and up 5. And there it is. Go ahead and take a second pause the video and write what the reflection would be. Okay, so hopefully you noticed that the x value stays the same, it would still be four. And you would, instead of going up five, you would be going down five. So you'd have negative five would be your y value. All right, let's try another one, negative three, negative four. We're going over the y-axis this time. So negative three, negative four, right there. Let's reflect it over the y-axis. Pause the video and then click play when you're ready to go on. Okay, so you should have realized that the negative four stayed the same. And instead of negative three, we're having a positive three. We have to go over this way instead of backwards. So we've got three, negative four. Last one, negative six, negative seven, and it's going to be over the x-axis again. X-axis. So let's find six, negative seven, should be right there, if I could get my pen. There we go. So go ahead and pause the video and reflect it over the X axis. 
great. So you should have seen that it's still got a positive value for 6. And instead of a negative 7, it's going to be a positive 7. So the, only the y value is changing. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab our math journals and turn to page 221, please. I'm going to pause, or you should pause the video and open up your book. Okay, so our math message says, for each polygon below, show and explain how you can use the areas of rectangles to help you find the area of the polygon. We know that to find area, you need to do base times height. And this is something that you hopefully have learned in other grades before. So let's figure out a way that we can split up this polygon into two rectangles or multiple rectangles. So the obvious choice here is to just cut it in half and see that we've got two equal sized rectangles. So our base for our first rectangle up here, whoops, sorry. Our base would be two and our height is four, and two times four is eight. In this one, we've got a base of four and a height of two. Four times two is also eight. And then to find the combined area, you'd need to add the two smaller areas together to get 16 units squared. And now it says to explain that. So let's go ahead and write some sentences about how we got there. So first we divided up the polygons, then we found each area, and then we added the areas together. So pause the video and write that down. Okay, so I wrote down that I divided the polygon into two rectangles. I multiplied base by height for each and added them together. You can write something similar to that or whatever you've got is fine. All right, let's do shape number two. So here we've got a different shaped polygon and we need to divide it up into some smaller rectangles. So go ahead and pause the video and decide where you would divide up this polygon into smaller rectangles. There are a couple ways that you could have done it. Some people like to make two skinny ones on each side and a bigger one in the middle. Some people like to make four long skinny ones. Some people like to make two really tiny ones on top, a big one in the middle and a square on the bottom. And you could add another line and make two skinny ones. Okay, there's lots of different ways that you could do it. I'm going to do it the first way. You could do it whichever way works best for you. So I've got two skinny ones and a bigger one. So we need to find the areas for each. So I know these are small and easy to count, but we're gonna do it anyway in practice. So we've got a base of one and a height of four. And so four times one is four. I know this is the exact same, so I'm just gonna do a four over there. And now for my big one, I've got a base of two and an inside height of four. Two times four is eight. So I've got four plus four plus eight eight that's going to give me 16 units squared again and then on my lines i'm going to write what i did so go ahead and pause and write what you did to solve if you did it like mine then you can write about like what i'm going to write about or if you solved it a different way go ahead and write how you solved it there's lots of different correct answers okay so there's my sentence I made two thin rectangles that had an area of four and a big rectangle with an area of eight. Then I added them together. All right, question number two. Examine the examples below and sketch the height for parallelogram five. Label the base and height for parallelogram five. So parallelogram three has its height sticking down from the top corner, going straight down and its 
base coming from the corner of the height extending to the bottom. For parallelogram four, its height is coming from a corner and going straight down. Notice how it's not going corner to corner because that's not straight across. And then its base is on the side making that 90 degree angle that we see on both of those. So for parallelogram five, we need to find our height. So we're trying to find the tallest point. I'm gonna go from this corner up here right next to the five and draw a line straight down. That's gonna be our height, so we can go ahead and label that. And then we need to find our base, and we need to create a 90 degree angle, just like right there, and that's going to be our base. So finding the area for parallelograms is the same as finding parallelograms for rectangles, but you have to find the height first which is a little more difficult with parallelograms because it's not measured by the side length. All right, next question. On page 222, we've got parallelogram A here. Now this is going to be the part that you are going to be carefully cutting and gluing. You should have a piece of paper in front of you that has six parallelograms on it. There's actually three different kinds, two of each, in case you do mess up. So there's parallelogram A, B, and C. Right now we're working on parallelogram A. So go ahead and do your very best careful cutting and cut out one parallelogram for letter A. And then pa pause the video and unpause when you are finished. Okay, now just set that parallelogram down for a second. We are going to find the base and height of parallelogram A. So let's go ahead and grab our base here first. So let's count all the way across. Now we're only gonna count corner to corner. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got a base of six units. And our height, we're going to pick from a corner and go down. So it doesn't matter which corner as long as you're going down. I'm gonna start with this one. We've got one, two, a height of two units. Okay, so now that we've got our base and our height, we need to multiply them together to find our area. We know that six times two is 12, and we're gonna use our same units here because we don't know if it's inches or centimeters or whatever. Okay, now we need to get your rectangle or your parallelogram, sorry, that you just cut out. Give me a second and I'm gonna draw one up here. Okay, so before you start taping any or gluing anything, we're gonna take your parallelogram and we're gonna turn it into a rectangle because you can find the area of parallelograms and rectangles the same way. So here is what we are going to do. Now you need your scissors and you need to cut very, very carefully, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to cut off one little side right here, just these little half pieces. Okay, cut that little part off, just snip it off. And you're going to go ahead and attach it over here. Okay, so when you attach it on the right way, you should have a whole rectangle like this okay so i'm going to go ahead and erase this other little bit okay so you should have a rectangle there that looks like that except not yellow obviously okay so now we're going to count the length of our shape here so our length or base is gonna be this, 
is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our length is still 6 units. And our height is 1, 2, still a height of 2 units. So now to find our area, we need to multiply 6 times 2. We know that that's 12. So 6 times 2 is going to be 12 units for this rectangle. All right, so go ahead and glue your rectangle in if you haven't already. Pause the video if you need to catch up, and then we're moving on. All right, so parallelogram B here, we've got um, our base and our height. So let's count our base here first. We've got one, two, three, four. A base of four units. And our height, remember we're going from the corner to the top, not corner to corner. We've got one, two, three, four units again. So four times four is 16 units squared for our area. So this is a parallelogram and a rhombus. All right, so now go ahead and cut out parallelogram B from your paper and just pause the video and cut out parallelogram B. But don't do any other cuts, just cut out on the black line. All right, so you should have that cut out now. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing as we did before. So you're going to trim off just this one sliver little triangle bit. Okay, and then you're going to glue it to the other side over here to make a square. So when it's together, it should look like a square. Hopefully nicer than mine because mine's a little bit sloppy. So you should have a square. So go ahead and put that together and glue it down. All right, so now our length, we need to count that. We've got one, two, three, four. Still a length of four units. And our height, one, two, three, four. Still a height of four units. Our area, length times width, or base times height, gives us again 16 units squared. Pause the video if you need to catch up, and here we go to the next one. Parallelogram C, we need to find our base and our height. So our base, I'm gonna start from the full corner over here. One, two, three, and a half. Three and a half units. Our height, going from corner to the top, I'm gonna go from the corner that we started with measuring our um, base. So we've got half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. So to check that again, oops. To check that again, you could start, you know, one, two, three, four, and a half, okay? Now we need to find our area of our parallelogram, so let's solve three and a half times four and a half. I'm gonna solve that on the side over here. 
We don't need to use our calculators right now. So we've got 15.75 units squared. I'm just going to shorten units to U. All right, so now we need to do the cutting of parallelogram C. So go ahead, pause the video, and cut it out. All right, now I know my drawing isn't super, but we're just going to roll with it. All right, so same situation as before. You're going to very, very carefully, okay, very carefully, we are going to, we are going to snip not from the corner, but from um, the, or sorry, not from the lines, but from the corner. Okay, so on your paper, you're going to go snipping off of that part. Okay, so from corner down here up to the top. I'm going to do my best on my line, but... Okay, so go ahead and snip that off. And then, you know, the drill, let's go ahead and attach it on the other side. Okay, so you should have a beautiful, beautiful rectangle. When you're all finished and you've cut the right parts, and glued the right parts. Remember, if you make a mistake, you have an extra. And remember to not cut from the lines, but you're cutting from the corner. Okay. So I'm gonna erase mine so we can see it a little bit better. Okay. So once you've got that cut and glued, let's go ahead and find our length. So we've still got one, two, three, four. That's not right. My pictures are wonky. I'm gonna do it on this one over here. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna use this um, drawing on the other side. So now I can count my units a little better than my really terrible drawing. So here we've got one, two, three and a half. And our width, one, two, three, four and a half. Now, if I multiply them together, same situation. I'm gonna get 15 and 75 hundredths units squared. All right, moving on. Number four, look for patterns in problems one through three. Use the patterns you find to write a formula for the area of a parallelogram. Use your formula to find the area of the parallelogram D-O-R-A. Use your ruler to measure where needed. Draw on and label the parallelogram to show what you measured. Area of parallelogram D-O-R-A. All right, so we are going to do this one as a small group when you come back to talk to your teacher. So go ahead and just put a little star on number four and we're gonna come back to it. All right, and for number five, it says for parts A, B, and C, draw a polygon on the grid and label the height and base. So a, a rectangle whose area is 12 centimeters squared. 
So what are two numbers that we can multiply together to make 12? Well, we know 12 and 1, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. All right, so you can use any of those. I'm going to go with the uh, 2 by 6 to make a rectangle. All right, so here we've got my 2 by 6 rectangle, and it says to label the height and the base. So my base is 6, and my height is 2. I'm going to label it A. Okay. The next one, B, a parallelogram that's not a rectangle and has an area of 12 centimeters squared. Okay, so something that's not a rectangle. So it can't be a square or a rectangle. So we are kind of left with just a parallelogram. Okay, so ones with slanted sides. And it has to have an area of 12 centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and do a three by four. So what I'm going to do is draw a base of three. And I'm gonna slide over a couple boxes and do another base of three, but one that's a height of four down. So like one, two, three, four. I'm gonna do another base of three. One, two, three. Okay, now I'm going to erase that line in the middle, and I'm going to connect those to make myself a parallelogram. So it has a height of 4 and a base of 3, and this is letter B. You can do any other combination that you'd like to make 12. For letter C, it says a different non-rectangular parallelogram with an area of 12. Okay, so it can't be the one that we just made for B, and it still cannot be a rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to do the 12 by 1 since I haven't done that one yet. So I'm going to make a really long line that's 12 cubes long. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, and I'm gonna make it have a height of one. So I'm just gonna bounce it over to this one and make it all the way. Stop at one at one less. Connect my sides. Now I have a base of twelve and a height of one. I'm gonna label my rectangle, or excuse me, my parallelogram. Okay, so you could have done whatever shapes or combinations you wanted, or you could have done the same ones I did, up to you. And I believe that this next part is going to be with your small group with the teacher. So you are completed with this video and you may go ahead and move on to your next item of business. Thank you for your hard work. I know this was a long lesson and you are doing a wonderful job.